Hello, Robert McDonald here. Please like, share, subscribe, and sh thank you. So, recently I was in a debate on Twitter with some feminists. And they were having a hard time accepting the link between feminism and transgenderism and the plethora of alphabet people and genders. They were refusing to acknowledge their role in paving the way for the alphabet people and their political agenda. Um, to the credit of one of the feminists, she did see the linkage between transgenderism and transhumanism, which is, is correct, because part of transhumanism is... Refusing to acknowledge biological limits, which is very much about, about uh, what transgenderism is, that we can just alter the body and do whatever we want with it through technology. And that is, a, and a, that is an aspect of this. This is the, uh, the latest iteration of humanism, because that's what trans, transhumanism and its... Uh, offspring of transgenderism is. It is um, because originally there was the idea of social engineering as promoted by Marxists and socialists where they thought they could just teach and train people into the new people, the ascended people. And then through fascistic ideas, including feminist leader Margaret Slanger, Sanger, they uh, began utilizing eugenics, which is a big part of why abortion was pushed. And then now today, with the advancement of technology, we have transhumanism. Although it's not recent, the, the uh, working up to transhumanism has been going on for close to 100 years. It's just that we are finally achieving a level of technology where we can make it appear to be successful in some ways. So, as I talked about in my Social Sexual Slippery Slope series, in which I went over all of this in a great big historical overview, I want to dwell more on feminism and its implications because there's a disconnect for the feminist between feminist theory what they're being taught what they're reading in their books the rhetoric etc and its actual implication in the real world how it's what is the result of applying these things and these ideas and what they ultimately lead to many of which can be seen logically that it would go this way mm -hmm. so feminism in theory is about equality you know and that goes all the way back to the french revolution and the original humanist and socialist and it, out of that even very early came some of the original feminists and they pushed for equality in theory but because it is ultimately a leftist ideology and it believes strongly in the tenet of progressivism, i.e. the revolution never ends, it can never actually stop at a concrete level of equality. It has to keep pushing forward to not just being legally equal, but some sort of sameness. And to achieve sameness, you have to ultimately deny reality, deny bio biology and the differences between the genders. And so this is, this is where, this is a key point in which feminism helped pave the way by deconstructing the West, Christianity, morality, morality tradition, 
marriage, family, gender roles, manhood, womanhood, womanhood, etc. by breaking down these differences and denying that they are real. Even though if we look at it from a biological perspective, just about any way you can measure a man versus a woman, there are differences. But because there needs to be that appearance of equality, they have to leave concrete factors like biology and ultimately lower standards to achieve the appearance of equality. There will never be a day in which men and women meet uh, go through the same standards to become firemen, policemen, and military and achieve equal results. It just won't happen. Women will always be a minority. But because that looks bad, they lowered standards. And these three areas are just the most obvious. It's happened mm -hmm. in many other ways in which the standards have had to be changed, altered, or lowered in order to achieve that appearance of equality because there has to be continuous progress. And so by breaking down all these structures, it pays the way for transhumanism, for transgenderism. And this is nothing new. If you study the history of feminists and what they actually thought, what the especially the leaders and the thinkers in the past, some of the earliest people, like you can find some of this information on the YouTube channel Studio B, you'll find that this is this was understood by some of the earliest feminists. They were feminine they were feminine supremacists. They didn't want to just achieve equality, they wanted to achieve a level of supremacy. To the point that there was a strong element that thought women should just be lesbians. And this is why, and this is also a big reason that when gays and lesbians achieve political status and power, feminism had no problem with that. Because there has always been a strong element of lesbianism in the feminist ideology and groups. And gays and lesbians are binary. They are gender segregated. So there was no interference. But then, and then of course the B, bisexual, is not really taken seriously anyway. So it was not an issue. It's not really a group. Uh, but it's when we get to the T and the plus and the plethora of whatever, especially the capital T, that things change. Because they, the fruit the logical result of these actions to push for equality, which whenever there is a push for egalitarianism, it ultimately becomes a push for sameness, they realize that they were cutting themselves out, and they don't want to face the responsibility for it. And like I said, there's other factors, because managerialism, bureaucratic government, wants sameness because it makes it easier to govern as i as i've talked about in other uh videos so there is that part that pushes for it and the centralization of power pushes for it and uh, another example so that it becomes obvious how there are multiple branches pushing there is when there is a push for racial blindness we forget there are differences between ethnic and racial groups. You know, for example, the dosages of medication is different in Japan for Japanese people than it is for Western Europeans because we, our bodies react different to different drugs and chemicals. You know, this, is, this has long been understood. It's not talked about because it's not politically correct. But it, it's a biological, scientific reality. And by denying that there are any differences and forcing equalness 
by appearance and ultimately sameness, it breaks down the structure. Now, it isn't always strictly biological because obviously each ethnic group is going to be operating under different social, economic, and cultural situations and and um, timetables of development, especially if you are a people who has moved from one continent to another. It takes time to build up and rise up. But if there is no acknowledgement of these differences, then there has to be a skewing of structure and standards and laws, and you get things like affirmative action. It is the same process, which is now being disputed in the Supreme Court as we speak, that the feminists help, in the same way the feminists help pave the way for transgenderism. And I'm not saying it's their fault. It, they, they played a role. It's not all on them, but they played a role to help break down the structures, the social institutions, the gender roles, moral norms, and especially the sexual revolution, which was heavily pushed by feminism, that results in this. Because all these different sexual deviances were present in the sexual revolution. Every one of them. <coughs> <coughs> Society had not changed enough to allow it all, and so most of them went back into the background after the 60s and 70s, but they were there. And it was just a matter of time, as I've talked about in my other videos, before they would rise up as the different ideologies like feminism, like critical race theory, broke down the structures and paved the way for what we have today. So, most definitely, feminism helped contribute to transgenderism. I don't care if your theory says it doesn't. All that is, is the same old tired, refuted line of, well, real communism hasn't been tried. That's all you're saying. No, the result mm -hmm. is, when applied to the real world as an ideology... It pushes for sameness and not equality. And some people, like I mentioned, Mary Harrington, have realized this. And they are trying to go back to a feminism that's based solely on concrete points of saying, well, yes, women can actually do these, these certain jobs and carry on these other responsibilities that they weren't before. And, to some, and there are some points there, as I talked about the effect of the industrial revolution on the west yeah we do we our social structures do did and do need to change in some ways but what we see today is way overdone way far out unhealthy imbalanced and as we can see today not good now i disagree as i said with mary harrington's points but Going back to those concrete points that are actually based on biology and real economic factors and social factors, we could actually have a conversation and we could actually get somewhere. But feminism today is so far past that that they're almost different things. But the, in conclusion, feminism most definitely helped pave the way. I mean, that's what deconstructing is. That's what those kind of gender studies talk about, ultimately. They may not say it clearly in their classroom, but when applied, especially through government, that is the result. Carry on.